Even with trade negotiations set to resume next month, the trade and tariff wars between President Trump and the Chinese government are not expected to end anytime soon. Among the industries where the tariffs are clawing away at profits is the lobster business. Economics correspondent Paul Salman reports from New England on the unusual twists of this story, part of our regular series, Making Sense. See the claw growing back right here? Oh, that's a little new Just claw. mind that one. Oh, and it's soft. And... Yeah, it kind of feels like a gummy bear. Out on uh, Casco Bay off Portland, Maine, with Dave La Liberté hauling lobster right. traps. That's the smallest lobster I've ever seen. Snaring mostly throwbacks. In order for us to keep a lobster, it's got to be three and a quarter inches across the back. That's called the carapace. Yeah. So there we go. We got a keeper. Lobstering is a one and a half billion dollar fishery helping keep the state of Maine's economy afloat. One, two, three, push. But last July, China, in fact, did retaliate with its own tariffs immediately after the U.S.'s move. The profit trustee crustaceans became a target of the trade war. Described as the largest trade war in economic history. A 25 percent retaliatory Chinese tariff on the auspiciously red and dragon-like foodstuff that over the past decade has become a sino sensation. Lobster is a top quality food product that we are using as the main selling point in our buffet because our guests are used to thinking that eating lobster should be something that they should pay a lot of money for. But not, it seems, an extra 25 percent. What it does, though, is. So lobstermen like Dave La Liberté are becoming desperate, no? No. Right now, the boat price is around $4 a pound. That was the price in 2018 as well as 2017. The tariff was put in a year ago. No effect? We haven't seen an effect on the boat price yet. But how can this be? China had been taking an ever bigger chunk of the local lobster catch, snapping up nearly half of Maine's exports. And that's the economic puzzle that brought me to Casco Bay. How can the price of lobsters not have dropped, given suddenly, drastically lower demand? Lobstermen aren't really being affected by this because Canada is buying our U.S. lobsters, tagging them as Canadian, and shipping them. And that, says Stephanie Netto, a wholesaler who buys at the dock and sells to the world, is the answer to the puzzle. And here they are. China's still getting its lobsters, even those from Maine, but not from American wholesalers. So you mean that Canada gets the business that the United States used to get? Yes. Period? Period. Here's a Canadian lobster, and here is the American lobster, each costing $4. Dave Kozlowskis once taught chemistry, felt trapped in the classroom, switched to lobstering 52 years ago. But as we found out, he's still a teacher to the core. This one goes over, still $4. This one now has a 25% tariff imposed by the Chinese government. Right. And so that is going to cost an extra dollar. Which one are you going to buy? They're identical. Both are Homeris Americanus. Both are from the Gulf of Maine. And why can U.S. lobsters get into China via Canada tariff-free? Because Canada is not in a trade war and happens to have its own quite liberal trade rules. And the way they write their certificates is it only has to come from the North Atlantic fishing region. It doesn't distinguish between country of origin. But on the flip side, any lobster shipped by an American wholesaler from the U.S. to China, even one caught in Canadian waters, is stamped product of the USA, thereby triggering the tariff. There's no way out for a U.S. lobster dealer, and you've given every advantage to Canadian lobster dealers. It's insurmountable. So China's retaliatory tariffs benefit the Canadian industry, already growing as the Gulf of Maine warms, pushing lobsters north. But so what? In the lobster industry, everything is connected. Annie Tzalikas runs the Maine Lobster Dealers Association. You represent wholesalers, the middlemen. Historically, neither customers nor suppliers have liked the middlemen, right? Our fishermen go out fishing every day. They come back and they bring in their lobsters. They are not the ones that are marketing and promoting their lobsters. So we really need this industry to work 
at its greatest potential. And for us, that also means having our valuable export markets accessible for this product that is so important to the state of Maine. In this particular product, you have to have middleman because someone has to be responsible for the life support system to get them to where they're going. You can't just take them out of the ocean and ship them. They'll die. They have to be kept in this very cold room and packed under temperature control. We develop packaging methods, um, how we keep our lobster tanks, how we handle our lobsters over 15 years. And it's that unique skill that's now, at least for the moment, obsolete. Worthless. Worthless. Worthless, yeah. That's tough to take. So what's an American lobster seller to do? The president recently tweeted an edict. Our great American companies are hereby ordered to immediately start looking for an alternative to China. And by the way, this is just what Maine Coast Lobster in York, one of the state's largest wholesalers, has been trying to do. We did find growth in Taiwan, in Korea, in Malaysia. We're starting to see some growth in the Middle East. Vice President Sheila Adams. We had two choices when the tariffs came out. We could retract, knowing that that business was going to go away, or we could say, let's go for it. So we had to look to other countries as well as continue to expand our domestic business. So how do you whet the appetite of American consumers for more lobster? So a promotion that you'll see done is lobsters are great for tailgating. Grilling a lobster, steaming up a lobster in a big parking lot before a game, you're going to have a lot of friends coming to see your tailgate party. And that's a double entendre, tailgate, lobster <laughs> tail, no? I didn't think of that, but I'll use it. <laughs> but smaller players like Stephanie Netto cannot. There's no untapped market we're missing. So what are you doing? Selling less lobsters, <laughs> making less money. As a result, she's laid off half of the 14 people in her wholesale operation. Our rural communities along the coast are dependent upon this fishery. Um, that's what is potentially very scary for us, is thinking about this long term. And by the way, says Lobsterman Kozlowskis. My bait bill last year was $32,000. This year it's going to exceed 50000 Because the price of herring has gone up. So shell fishermen, too, are now starting to feel a substantial pinch. We're not achieving anywhere near our profit margin this year as we did last year and the year before. You mean your costs are going up? Correct. So the fact that the price is the same at the wharf is misleading because you need to be charging more just to stay even. Absolutely. My dealer is trying to supplement our income Right. by giving us a higher price, but he can't because of the tariffs. I'm gonna push that in here. And hey, even 18-year lobster vet Dave La Liberté is go. trying to escape the, the vagaries right of the right now right volatile right lobster trade. Just slide that out. That's it. Our primary business is, uh, is tourism. Really? Yeah, taking the passengers out. I don't think we're necessarily making a lot more money than a commercial lobsterman. We're just diversifying a little bit just in case Canada takes the opportunity to further build up its lobster industry. Oh, whoa! And take the Chinese market away permanently <laughs> from the United States. This is Business and Economics correspondent Paul Salman reporting from Maine.